that's what's more fun for me. I spent most of my life as has become a comedic icon by playing charming, world-weary and sarcastic characters. His success stems from his uncanny knack to be able to choose scripts that dovetail with his unique persona. Bill is a master of quick wit and improvisation, claiming to never do the same take twice, which is the same type of spontaneous behaviour Murray has embodied since childhood. Bill was a known troublemaker in his youth, subsequently leading him to be kicked out of Boy Scouts, his Little League baseball team, and most notably was arrested for attempting to smuggle nine pounds of marijuana through Chicago's O'Hare Airport. At 20 years old, Murray was a troubled soul. But in an attempt to turn his life around, Bill joined Chicago's Second City Improvisational Comedy Group. Finding his passion for entertaining, Bill then tried his luck and moved to New York to fill a regular spot in relatively new sketch show, Saturday Night Live. Bill's time at SNL honed his improv skills that would later become his trademark in the industry. Some people will try to tell you that, you know, acting is doing it exactly the same every time. Well, I, those people are, should be in hospitals, I think. Uh, uh, every moment is different. I mean, if you ask me this question, I'll answer it differently the next time, not just because my brain is loose, but because it's just a different moment. The moment is always different. And if you lock into a moment trying to catch and recapture a moment, then you're missing the boat and you're not free. Free enough, open enough to uh, find something funny. Because if you're loose, the funny things appear. SNL was the launch pad Bill needed to break into film acting, which he did with a string of box office hits, such as playing a whacked out camp counselor in Meatballs, a simple but determined greenskeeper in Caddyshack, and a lovable wise guy in Stripes. But all the while, Bill was working on a film adaptation of the novel The Razor's Edge, which would be his first starring role in a drama film. Struggling to get funding for the project, Murray had to make a deal with Columbia Pictures to get his film financed. They asked him to act in the supernatural success, Ghostbusters. And as we now know, it became the highest grossing comedy film of the 1980s, and projected Bill onto the world stage. In turn for this, the studio funded The Razor's Edge, but unfortunately, it turned out to be a flop, sending Bill into a four-year hiatus from acting. So how does Murray feel about revisiting the Ghostbuster series for part three? I'll do it if you go back to high school for two more years. How's that? <laughs> well, that's what it's like. No, it, the first one was really great, and the second one was okay. So, you know, that's, you can go too many times for, for my taste, you know. And, you know, just, if it were a horror movie and more people were killed, that'd be something else. But, it's, you know, we did save the world the first time. It's really tough to top that. Very true. It is tough to top Ghostbusters. Yet some of Murray's best work was still to come. The 90s saw some Murray classics, most famously, the wonderfully repetitive Groundhog Day. It's the story of a bored, cynical TV weatherman forced to relive the same day over and over again until he gets it right. The concept may seem boring, but Murray's brilliance keeps you entertained from the first alarm bell until the end of the day. Too often, Bill had been pigeonholed into comedic roles, with his dramatic efforts being brushed aside until he starred in Sofia Coppola's Lost in Translation. Written and directed by Coppola, Bill shone in the role that appeared to mimic elements of his real life. Basing the lead character on Murray required Coppola to track down the elusive Bill for over a year. Well, she wrote the script to write the script, but... Uh... But I had him in mind, and that's why I was picturing it. So it helped me when I was writing to um, picture him or what he might do in a situation. and. Um... And, I, yeah, I really wanted to work with him on this and sent him pages. The film is based on an ageing film star travelling to Japan to appear in a series of promotional commercials, ultimately living a lonely and lost existence. On location in Japan, Bill appreciated the symmetry between playing the character and the actual work environment he was living in. And this time I was on location playing an actor on location, <laughs> so it had a sort of a uh, compound effect, a double boiler effect, where you'd do it all day and then you'd do it all night. So it was, uh, you were constantly recharging your 
your lonely batteries and your <laughs> your alienated batteries and your dislocated batteries. So there was never an, uh, a lack of energy, even if even though we were going without sleep. Lost in Translation proved to be a dramatic rebirth for Murray, earning him both Golden Globe and Oscar nominations. And now the man who'd found success by shunning the traditional rules of the movie business was now happy to transition into the next phase of his career. I've gotten a little older, I guess. That's the transition, I suppose. But uh, I feel like the material changes, the material you receive. I don't get uh, summer camp movie scripts uh, any, that much anymore, <laughs> as often. And, uh, and this movie was, I, I, what I like about it is it's a, it's a real adult movie. It's, a, it's, a, it's about the kinds of things that almost every adult has to make a decision on about, what, about how they're going to behave in the absence of a monitor, of, of someone telling them how to behave when they're really free to behave the way they, they, they choose to. You know, I, I just think that's very rare in a film. Bill is a man who has navigated his way through film offers with an uninfluenced instinct for quality and having proven himself as a versatile acting veteran, he was ready to surprise us again. Broken Flowers was another notable witty drama embedded with classic Murrayisms. Director Jim Jamush was just happy to watch Bill be Bill. I think you could make a beautiful film of Bill observing or reacting to almost anything because of that incredible human quality, empathetic quality he has, and a kind of contradictory mixture of, of melancholy and then that mischievousness, you know? Over the years, Murray has been aligned to a few directors, but the most significant partnership has to be with Wes Anderson, who has been working with Bill from Rushmore to the Life Aquatic with Steve Zizou. Bill is renowned for only emerging from obscurity to work with directors he is interested in. Their mutual respect is clearly displayed in the Life Aquatic, as Bill completely submerged himself into the complicated character. To see Bill Murray go to Italy by himself, you know, with our, we had our whole group, but he's, the, you know, usually he's somebody who's got six kids and, you know, he's got a whole family, and he's there working by himself for eight months, playing a character who's, you know, tormented and, um, and angry and, um, you know, a very agitated and, and pained and everything, and, um, and also energetic. And, um, and he really threw himself into that completely. And, um, and, and I think, he, you know, we all had an amazing time being in Italy, but I think for him it was also mixed with, he was really into this character for that whole period of time. And that's like the, that had a huge effect on the whole movie because, he, because we really were with, felt like the, he was the kind of method about it, you know? He was completely into the character. The anticipation of Bill Murray's next move is what makes him such a mystery. And he surprised us all when he lent his voice to play a badger in the animation Fantastic Mr. Fox. So how does one get in touch with their inner badger? Channeling the badger, uh, uh, you know, I've, we've all got a little critter in us, you know, a little critter. And uh, when cornered, we can fight ferociously. And sometimes we burrow deep, deep, deep to get away from other people and be safe. Uh, none of that makes any sense to you right now, but uh, I think uh, playing a badger, unless you've done it, we can't even have this conversation. <laughs> so after three and a half decades in the public sphere, Bill still does not have an agent and is not aligned with any of the studios. So how does anybody get in contact with Mr Murray? Well, one of two ways. There is a P.O. box to send scripts to or a phone number to leave a voice message on. If Bill likes what you have to say or your script, he will contact you. This proved to be quite difficult for Aaron Schneider and Dean Zanek, who were chasing Bill to play an undertaker in their period indie, Get Low. Sending their script to Bill luckily stirred the reclusive Murray to make contact, but the puzzling communication they shared turned out to be quite a gamble for the pair. We didn't know what to expect, but uh, at this point, we didn't, you know, we didn't have anything to lose, and, and uh, well, we kind of did. We all did of a sudden, because all we, of a sudden his interest got everyone excited, so that if, if it hadn't worked out, it might have been Our, our financiers, uh, private investors, uh, you know, were now sort of expecting Bill because we were teasing him with the idea of Bill. And, and uh, lo and behold, he, he called again, and I 
I took the call and that started the sort of conversation and through sort of cryptic messages and emails and, and uh, letters that, that Aaron wrote and Bobby wrote, uh, he came down to Georgia and, and uh, really de delivered. Recently, the internet has ignited with blogs and articles dedicated to the phenomenon of Bill Murray's sightings. Similar to the legend of Bigfoot, Bill has been popping up randomly across the world, surprising the general public by joining in on their parties or events. For example, turning up to a Scottish house party to do the dishes, or rocking up to try his hand at bartending with none other than the Wu-Tang Clan. He's a comedic actor who's helped define many moments in our pop culture history. Bill Murray is hilariously unpredictable and one of the best actors to be consistently working outside the box. And we can't wait to see what he has in store for us next. Stay tuned to Starfix for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. Find or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and at mnc.tv.